Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome everyone to Sports Spectrum. My name is Jason Romano. Great to have you joining us here today on the show. I want to encourage you to check out our website, sportspectrum.com, where we have content on there all day long on the intersection of sports and faith articles, including daily devotional, 6 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. You get a little daily devotional, great way to start your day right with God, intersecting sports and faith. Every podcast can be found there as well. And you can also subscribe to our quarterly magazine for just $18 for an entire year, $18 for a year. You can get a subscription to the Sports Spectrum magazine. You can subscribe today by going to sportspectrum.com. Today on the podcast, we welcome Aubrey Monroe to the show. She is Team USA's Olympic softball catcher. Aubrey has got a great story, and we talk a lot about um, her journey of faith. And, and recently, if you turned on ESPN at all over the last couple of weeks, you saw a lot of women's college softball. And maybe it's just because my daughter is playing softball, but man, that is such an exciting sport to watch. My wife's into it. And every night she's like, all right, what game's on? We're going to turn it on and we're going to watch it. And uh, our daughter who plays catcher, just like Aubrey, our guest, loves watching softball as well. And so there's a, a keen interest right now, I think, in the game of softball and a unique opportunity for a lot of these young ladies to influence a lot of young people in how to play sports right, how to do uh, the right thing on the field, have fun, camaraderie, teamwork. But there are many women out there who are very open about their faith as well. You saw that with a couple of the USCLA players. You saw that with a majority of the Oklahoma Sooners softball team. We even had Coach Patty Gasso here on the podcast about a month ago. And now we bring you Aubrey Monroe. Aubrey is a two-time NCAA national champion with the Florida Gators, and she's a member of, like I said, Team USA as an Olympic softball catcher, a four-time SEC academic honor roll, and recently just got married a couple months ago. She also works in a great ministry with Janie Reed, who was also a guest here on our podcast a few months back, called Church in the Dirt, which is a really neat ministry where they bring church to the softball field, uh, and certainly being able to do discipleship, bring church, share Bible study, Bible verses, pray. Really neat idea for a ministry that's been started. It's called Church in the Dirt, and Aubrey is a part of that. So you're going to like this conversation with Aubrey Monroe. We talk about her time uh, playing softball at Florida and really growing in her faith. Uh, she said she accepted Christ as a freshman at Florida, so her faith became real to her when she went to college with the Gators, and now living that out, that faith out as a catcher with Team USA and being able to travel around the world to be able to play some softball. What a cool experience that is. So enjoy this conversation with Aubrey Monroe, Team USA Olympic softball catcher here on Sports Spectrum. Aubrey, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to talk to you, Aubrey. The Women's College World Series just ended about a week ago, and uh, my daughter plays catcher like yourself and, and is a 15-year-old playing high school ball, and And we were glued to the television watching the Women's College World Series this year, UCLA beating Oklahoma uh, in two games, and it was just the whole tournament was fascinating, not just the World Series, really. We watched you know, the Super Regionals, and then we watched the, the World Series with all the different teams, and then the final game there. It was fascinating to watch and the the growth of women's softball I think is really a neat thing to see I just wonder I know you were out there in Oklahoma City what uh what your thoughts were I guess on the women's college world series UCLA winning and maybe the popularity of, of women's softball well I can't say enough about the world series it's so much fun the atmosphere there is second to none I mean honestly with softball being back in the Olympics now like that kind of opens up a new, I guess, realm of atmosphere, a bigger atmosphere that hasn't been around for a while. So for a long time, the greatest atmosphere for softball has been the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. And so having played there three years and being in the championship series twice, um, I mean, it's electric. It is so much fun. And 
this year, like you were saying, just being glued to the TV, the softball was really good this year. Yeah. Like it was unbelievably good. Just really good games. I can't even I can't even tell you how many games went to extra innings or had walk offs or just really, really exciting games from the second postseason started. Um, so then for it to go all the way through to the World Series and just lots of I mean, tons of home runs this year, which I know people love to see. Um, so it was just a lot of exciting moments. Um, and it was cool being back in Oklahoma City. I've never been there for a Florida game as a fan. Hmm. So that was new for me. But um, I really enjoyed it. Got to see the girls. I know that Florida didn't really have the 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 ending that they wanted. But, um, you know, it gets harder and harder every single year. And only, te- only one team is going to be the last one standing. And so to make it to Oklahoma City now is even harder than it was when I was playing in college just three, four years ago. Yeah. So it's unbelievable just how much the game has grown and the atmosphere has just become more and more electric every single year. It's so much fun. Yeah, you played in one, two of those bad boys. And what was that <laughs> like, I guess, for you? It's the biggest stage, as you mentioned, as a college softball player, for sure. Share with us that experience, what that's like. Because I'll, I'll tell you something I noticed, especially with Oklahoma and UCLA. They both have such a camaraderie and such a, a love for each other, you know, which I think is kind of prevalent on any team that wins at all, especially uh, in softball. But they look like they're able to have fun and still take it so serious because it is mm-hmm. the national – it's a title game, right? Uh, I would watch somebody give up a home run from UCLA or from Oklahoma and they'd be smiling and the catcher would come out and give them – give them, you know, a high five and be like, it's all right. And they, and they were smiling and chuckling. And I'm like, that's not the professional sports world that I know. And it's not professional, obviously it's college, but that's not the elite sports world that I know where everything is like the end of the world. If you lose, there seems like such a camaraderie, such a love, such a joy uh, to play the game, win or lose. And so for you, you played on that stage. Tell us what that was like. Oh my gosh. Some of my favorite memories are on the field in Oklahoma City. I mean, obviously winning national championships and dog piles and things like that are so fun, but <laughs> you're right. The camaraderie that comes with, um, I think it's unique a little bit to college sports. And then it's like another level with female athletics. Um, I think some part of that is that we're women and, you know, we're, you know, we like to have, we like to really bond and we do all our silly little like bonding things and have our weird jokes. Um, I think that plays a part, but also, um, in a lot of female athletics, the, the professional level isn't really developed enough or it hasn't really gotten to the big stage. So in so many ways, um, college athletics for women, like that is it, you know, so that, that is the biggest stage you're going to play at. And those kind of the, the level of intensity there is at times as intense as it's going to get. So it's, um, I think the dynamic for women, especially is unique, um, but then beyond that, just playing on that field and then knowing how much work you've put in. I mean, we used to prepare in our 6 a.m.s. You know, we'd be ha- we'd have five more reps left of our run and it would be you win five games at the World Series, win five straight and you're a champion. You know, like that was our mantra when we would just be dying at six in the morning running. Um, so you prepare from day one to get there. Um, and then just. The camaraderie, I know, I think the other thing is that softball is such a small world. I know yeah. Shane Knighton hit the tie, game-tying home run in the seventh inning to extend Oklahoma's season at least just one more half inning. It was such a great Offering moment. Guard, oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Yeah. And Shane Knighton is such a killer competitor. I mean, an incredible young woman. Um, she They played Florida in 2017 for the championship, and I was there as a student coach. And she did the same thing to us in a 17 inning game to win it. So it was kind of having flashbacks, but her and Rachel had played travel ball together growing up. So there's, there's the softball world is so small that I think there's a lot of little connections there that, I mean, Rachel having, they won game one. So there's a little bit of extra, you know, you're not as tight maybe as Oklahoma might be, but um, just to be like, she's probably thinking, gosh, eh? like I've seen you do this since we were 12. Yeah, and you just did it to me on the biggest stage, you know, things like that. <laughs> but um, I just think the the friendships go really deep, um, and it's just 
to play on that stage, to be the last two standing. There's so much to be proud of that even if you don't win, um, there's just a lot to be proud of. And when you can learn to enjoy the journey more than just, you know, the result, I think it helps a lot at that stage. You won back-to-back titles in 2014 and 2015. And I'm sure you've asked, been asked this question, but I think it's a legit question because they're both hard to win. But which one's harder? Is it harder defending or harder getting that first one? Mm, that's actually, I think it's harder to defend it um, because there's so many expectations throughout the entire year. Once you get to the World Series, you're at the World Series, you know, but the goal is just to get back at first and then you kind of reset your goal. Um, the first one to me is sweeter because it's the first one yeah. and it was the first one for our school and so many incredible moments, but we had come back really hungry that year. And then the second one was we had majority of the same team um, and we knew what it took to get there. So if I'm being a hundred percent honest, it never really felt hard when we were doing it. But then when we tried to come back the next year to defend the back to back, that was really, really hard. Mm. And, uh, and we ended up actually getting upset at home in super regionals. Um, because, and I think a lot of that has to do with some of the pressure that we put on ourselves as, as a senior class. And then also just as a program, you know, it's, it's hard to kind of, you, you feel like you can't really please anybody because you're supposed to win. So if you don't, it upsets everybody. But if you do win, it's the expectation. So I think it's at times it's harder to defend championships. Aubrey Monroe is our guest here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Your story in becoming an elite softball catcher didn't start according to plan from what I saw. You heard a lot of no's early on before those yeses came uh, early in your softball catching career. Can you share a little bit about what that was like uh, in terms of the growth of your softball journey? Yeah, um, I was I was never like your standout kid, really. I worked really hard. Um, I loved the game, but I wasn't like in high school, it wasn't the kid that people were talking about. I wasn't ever, I wasn't ever really a big hitter. And I mean, if you know, baseball or softball as a fan, you know, that if you hit, you play. And so yeah. that defense was always my specialty. I looked at catching as a craft. So I was, I've always been known as um, a great defensive catcher, as opposed to just like a really great softball player, you know? So I had, when I was 12 years old, I had a coach tell me that I wouldn't play D1 because I was too small, like skinny. And just, I looked frail. Um, cause I was like five ten at 12 years old and no muscle. So <laughs> and awkward, uh, right. Which yeah, is every 12 year old. <laughs> oh my God. Extremely awkward string bean for life. I mean, that's just kind of how I've been. And so I was devastated at 12 years old. Um, but then I had another coach who told me, and I, I love telling the story because it really did impact me that much, but I was 12 years old. And another coach come over to my house. I was just contemplating like, well, if this person, this coach that told me no, like they know what they're talking about. How can I overcome that? She knows what she's talking about. And I had this other coach come by who was much younger um, and she was smaller too. Like she was short. So she had kind of dealt with a lot of that same kind of people sort of putting you in a box because of your, your size or something. And so she, she wrote down this quote. It said that doctors and scientists said that running the four minute mile would be an impossible feat that one would die in the attempt. And so after crossing the finish line, I figure I must be dead. And so it was just her way of saying like, you know what, just because this person seems qualified doesn't mean that they can, that they can tell you what you're going to achieve and who you can be, you know? And so I had a, I've always been the type of player um, with the intangibles. Like I just love the game so much. I loved being involved. I wanted it that bad. And so I found myself doing things that physically I probably had no business doing. Right. But I would just almost will it to happen. I wanted it that bad. And so um, plenty of struggles, plenty of frustrating moments throughout my career. But um, my mom is a huge part in me being here on Team USA because she was always the right amount of belief um, and keeping it real to keep me you know, progressing, but also just helping me believe in myself because there was a lot of times when it would just be like, am I ever going to get there? You know? So she would always just say, put your head down and work, just put your head down and work. And when you look up, you'll find yourself exactly where you want to be. And that's exactly what happened for me. I just worked really hard. 
um, took advantage of opportunities. My mom to this day, she she's, would just say, you know what? I prayed a lot. I, when we got opportunities, I prayed a lot to, to just try to whatever God needed me to do to help you get where you wanted to go. I just, that's what I wanted to do. And so, um, I'm so lucky to have the mom that I had to, to push me and also love on me through all of it. Um, but yeah, I was never the, like the girl that yeah. people would watch. No, I think that's a good story though. And I think even the fact that you're a California girl and you end up a gator, you know, right. kind of that journey. So take us through that. How does that happen? And I know we're going to talk about your faith in a second and how that um, really took shape for you uh, when you were at Florida, but just the idea of going to Florida and, you know, coming to be a gator from California. Yeah. So I, went on two visits, like two unofficial visits. I went to Alabama first and then I went to Florida and I really did love Alabama. I thought it was great. Um, I, at that point I was playing for the SoCal athletics under Bruce Richardson and Rob Weil and, um, was really learning to compete and really learning. I learned how to win on that team. Um, we won PGF nationals, th my sophomore, junior and senior year. Um, but we were just, I learned how to compete on that team. I learned how to kind of they were, you know, they yelled and they got on us, but it was because they had expectations for us to play the game the right way. So I really learned how to do things the right way and learn to appreciate that. So then when I went on my visit to Florida, um, Coach Walton is actually from California himself. He recruits pretty heavily out of California. Um, so I got to, I got to, sorry, excuse me, the University of Florida. And a lot of the girls were from California mm. and a lot of like the team vibe and culture was very much what I was used to. Um, just the style of play, the, the culture of the team and the girls. Um, and then coach Walton was ultimately the, what tipped the scale for me because I ended up watching a, a replay game late at night and it ended up being Florida and Alabama go figure. They were basically who I had narrowed my, my choices down to. Um, and coach Walton lost it on this play at the plate. He just, I mean, it, which is when I tell the story, people are always like, what, you, he lost it and you wanted to go play for him. Um, hmm. But I really did. I just, he, it just showed me that he went to bat for his team. Like whatever it took, he was, he wanted to do right by his team. Um, and I, I just looked at that and I was like, man, I want to play for that man. And so I called him the next day. I said, I want to be a Gator. And he said, okay, start thinking about what number you want to be. And I said, well, <laughs> I've been number one like my whole life. So I would probably die if I could be number one in college. And he was like, all right, it's yours. Wow. So that was a little cherry on top for me. But um, yeah, Coach Walton tipped the scale. But in terms of the overall culture, it was just kind of was what I was used to with enough, you know, Florida's different than California. So I was going to get a new experience for college, but still a little similar where I didn't feel too, too far out of my comfort zone. Hmm. And that comfort zone was certainly tested and challenged too, as far as your faith goes. Mm -hmm. So give us that snapshot. I know talking beforehand, you talked about growing up, you know, going to church occasionally and things like that, but that faith didn't really become your own until you got to Florida. So tell us about that. Absolutely. Yeah. I grew up going to church. Um, my parents actually got divorced when I was four, um, but my mom kept taking us to church. She knew it was important for my, my older sister and I mm. to be in church. And so I knew like your basic stories, um, your Adam and Eve, your Noah um, and things like that. But I never really dove into the Bible myself. Um, and then once I started playing travel softball, that kind of was most important in our life. And so we I didn't get a chance to go to church very often. Um, and then towards the end of my senior year of high school, I was starting, I always felt like there were little nudges, like big moments where I was like, hmm, okay, there's, there's something big going on here. There's, there's another plan at work. And I don't know if I fully recognize that as the Lord and his guidance, but, um, there were moments throughout high school, even that I was just like, okay, there's, there's something here, you know? And so, wow, my faith wasn't personal yet. There were little nudges along the way to kind of to kind of keep me, I guess, keep me on the hook for Jesus a little bit. And so um, I got to college. I thought I was going to be a major impact player right when I got there. Um, and I ended up getting a lot more homesick than I thought. And my performance was not nearly what I expected, um, mm -hmm. even defensively. I mean, I mentioned that I wasn't always a great hitter, but um, defensively, I struggled just making uncharacteristic mistakes 
And so I started to, I started to kind of spiral a little bit in terms of who I thought I was and, um, and what I needed. And I had started going to an athletes in action Bible study, um, a little bit that year. I knew I was kind of like, okay, I think I need something outside of softball, but I wasn't fully bought in yet. So I would go with a couple of teammates. Um, and then at one point during our season, I was struggling. I wasn't playing as much as I had hoped I would be, um, but I wasn't performing. And so it was that year that I really realized that my identity was way too wrapped up in softball. Mm -hmm. I would leave the field after a bad practice and it would lead to a bad week of practice. I would leave the field thinking, what am I like? I felt like I went to Florida for softball in so many ways at the beginning that if I wasn't doing well at softball, what was I doing here? Like what was, what it was my life about at that point. And so, um, I got to the point mid season, um, just again, really frustrated. And then I was hitting on the off day, um, and half because I knew I needed to practice and get better and half because I didn't want to have to lie if coach asked me if I hit on the off day. Um, but I was walking back from the cage. I was just, again, that day I was hitting and I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't feel good. Not, I couldn't feel my swing, nothing. I got so fed up. I was like, whatever, I'm done for today pick the balls up. I start walking back to the locker room and I just started to cry. And I was like, God, I'm done. I I remember this moment so clearly. I didn't, I don't think I actually said anything out loud, but I just stopped and I said, God, I'm done. It's yours. Like take over. I don't care anymore. Like I couldn't, I was holding on so tight for control. And it was like, "I, I can't do this anymore. God, just take over. I'm giving you my life whatever happens, happens. And as weird as that was, I mean, I, it was like the first time I could breathe all year. There was this overwhelming peace that came over me. Um, and it's not like my game picked up next day, like, Oh, gave it to God and everything turned around. No, I still struggled a little bit, but when I struggled instead of taking it home and questioning my worth and who I was as a person, I was able to just kind of chalk it up to like, okay, leave it at the field you know what, show up again tomorrow and work hard. Um, so that helped me a lot. And just perspective wise, I did, it didn't feel so heavy anymore. Um, I didn't carry my mistakes or, um, my frustrations with me. And so through that changing perspective of, you know what, no matter what happens today, I know God loves me really helped me just relax and be able to just get back to playing the game the way I always had growing up. And there's an awesome video that you shared from about three years ago, 2016, of you being baptized. What was Mm -hmm. that like? Yeah. So my freshman year, I gave my life to Christ. And then through my college years, um, I really just started to like develop a heart for God and just like wanting to serve him and honor him. And so it was definitely a process of, you know, learning and wanting, but just through everything, going back to the freedom that I felt when I gave my life to Christ. I, I never wanted to lose that. I never wanted to to go back to being crushed by expectations that I put on myself or whatever. So um, I just kept just trying to follow God and what he had for me and honor that and live my life the way um, I felt he wanted me to live my life. And so then for my senior year, my family, like my mom would come out in the spring. My dad would come out in the fall. But um, my senior weekend of so 2016, it was in May. Um, my whole family was there and I went to our athletes in action leader. And I was like, Hey, uh, would you be able to baptize me? It's been on my heart for a long time, like probably two years. It had kind of been stirring in my heart. Like Hmm. never been baptized. I think I want to be baptized and just not really at first knowing how to go about it or, and then after a while, just like, okay, when would I do it? Um, and actually I have younger siblings as well. Um, I have twin sisters that are 11 years younger than me and a brother who's 13 years younger than me. And they got baptized (laughs) while I was in college. And my mom told me about it. I was at school when they got baptized. And my little brother, when he got baptized, was like almost emotional. And he was a little boy. Like he was probably seven. Um, And my mom asked him like, okay, like what, what did you feel after you got baptized? And he was like, mom, I just felt like Jesus was right there. And when she told me that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I need that. I, that's, what, that's what I want. I want that closeness to the Lord. And I had felt it, but 
it was really that kind of push for to to take that step of obedience of like you know what Jesus is right there and so it's kind of funny because my while it had been on my heart my siblings my younger siblings really inspired me to 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 really go for it and not question it and so um, my athletes in action advisor basically was like yeah absolutely we met we talked about it um, he wanted to make sure that like my heart was you know in the right place that I wasn't uh, you know just just wanted to talk about it first and so. I had my senior weekend and my senior day was like, it was just so special. It was the most loved I've ever felt at a softball field. It was incredible. And then the next day was uh, we won the SEC that year too. So that weekend we clinched the SEC title outright. And so it's a Sunday night. My teammates are wanting to go out and celebrate all this stuff. And I (laughs) send in our group message. I'm like, hey guys, just so you know, I'm getting baptized tomorrow. If you want to come, you're more than welcome. We're going to do it here. Um, No pressure, no big deal, but just wanted you guys to know if you want to come, cool. You know, and they're all, it's like Sunday night. Again, they're celebrating the win and everything. And one of my teammates immediately texted me back. She's like, I want to go. What time? (laughs) And so then the next day I go like in most of my team, I think we had 18 girls and I think 15 girls were there. Um, they showed up to watch me be baptized. My boyfriend, who's now my husband was there. Um, my whole family. And it was just so special. It was in like the pool of my apartment complex, just, but so incredibly special. And just to see my whole team there when, I mean, off days towards the end of season are like treasured, you know? Yeah. So for them to show up on a Monday morning to see me be baptized and to be witness to that was just so special. And then just like my brother had said, I mean, I was so full in that moment. Um, So it's just every May 9th, I'm just reminded of how good God is and that act of obedience and um, just how special of a memory getting baptized was not only for my faith and just my walk, but also just to see so many people there supporting me on my walk with Christ was just incredible. I love that. Aubrey Monroe has been our guest here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Uh, it's interesting too, because now your team US, you know, you're identified, at least if I'm putting a label on what you are right <laughs> now, your team USA Olympic softball catcher. And you were part of that team uh, last year that helped clinch the US's birth in the Olympics. And I love that softball is coming back to the Olympics next year in 2020. I want to talk about a moment, though. We wrote about this, actually, on SportsSpectrum.com um, for you. When you were up to bat, it was a game against Japan, uh, one that if you had won, you would qualify for the U.S. for the, the Olympics, and you were up to the plate. It's extra innings, and you hit a game-tying RBI single. But the story that we posted about you was what you posted on Twitter, saying how you prayed mm-hmm. during that at-bat, which – We've had a lot of athletes on here, Aubrey, a lot of professional athletes, high profile people. Many of them talk about praying before, certainly praying after. Uh, But in that moment of being up there at bat and praying out loud, I believe, can you take us through that a little bit and tell us kind of, is that something you normally do? And maybe the moment that you were actually doing that and then being able to obviously come through for your team too. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say it's normal for me. (laughs) Yeah. But um, those games against Japan, we had played in the semifinal that went to extra innings the night before. And Rachel Garcia, who actually just won the World Series with UCLA, hit the walk-off in the night before to send us to the championship game. And then Japan ended up coming back through the other side of the bracket to play us in the championship. Um, And that game went 10 innings. It was just back and forth. They scored, we scored, they scored, we scored back and forth, back and forth. And so... Um, it was a super high energy game, which is, those are my favorites because to me, it's like, that's what we play for. That's what we grew up like dreaming about. So those are the games that I enjoy the most, even though they're probably for the most stressful for most people. (laughs) Um, but I'm really fortunate to have a cool group of women on team USA that, um, we really come together as believers. And so Janie, who's been on the sports spectrum podcast before she, had shared with us in a Bible study earlier that week, um, going through Hebrews four. Um, and we spent time on verses 15 and 16 
Um, and so 16 especially says, and I'll, I got my Bible out so I, I could do it justice. I have mine here too, so I'm <laughs> yeah. turning right now. <laughs> so Hebrews 4, 16, it said, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I use the um, ESV version of the mm. Bible. But um, we had just as a group, I mean, it's like five or six of us that, you know, when you're grinding through the summer and it's really easy to lose perspective, it's just really humbling. And um, it really kind of just fills your cup a little bit to get together as women and kind of dial it back to the real purpose and the real reason we're there. Um, so we had gone over that verse and just kind of talked about like, man, we can come to God with the desires of our hearts. We can come confidently because, I mean, he wants to give us the desires of his heart. We, as long as like we're trying, we want to honor him and, and just live our life according to his purpose. Like, why are we so like scared sometimes? Or we get, I mean, reverence is very, it's big in faith. I mean, obviously we want to, um, revere the Lord, but sometimes it gets so like, well, I can't, I can't ask for that. Like, that's too much when the reality is like, God wants, God wants to give us those things, you know? And so we just talked about how, like what that means to just draw near to the Lord confidently and whatever that looks like, not necessarily always with requests, but like with the desires of our hearts and just, um, and just drawing near because of the grace that we have through Jesus, like draw near to that and be confident in, in the Lord and what, and what he says about you. And that just finding my identity in Christ has obviously been a huge part of my testimony. And so I came up to bat in the bottom of the 10th. Um, the tying run was on second, the winning run was on first. And so I come up to bat in, um, Wayno is the pitcher for Japan and she's one of the best in the world. I mean, she really, she can make the ball do some crazy things. And so, um, I was up to bat and I was just praying out loud. I'm looking way now dead in the eye. And I'm just like, Lord, help me draw near to you. Like just draw near to you. Allow, allow me to have confidence through you, Lord. Just like kind of speaking that prayer um, over myself and my at bat, like Lord, and just praying again, like, okay, Lord, if I fail, help me to still give you glory. Okay. If I succeed, Lord, let me point it to you. You know, I mean, cause it's really easy to say those things, I think, to say like, oh, I want to give God the glory. And then, but when the moment actually happens, what do we do? Or if we fail, are we really okay? And so kind of praying that over myself as well. I mean, if I get the job done, we at least tie or win. And if I don't, we lose. And so just praying that over my at bat. And I, I mean, I was, she probably thought I was crazy. Like, what's this girl up to bat talking about? Like she watching my mouth move. I, who knows? But um, <laughs> I was just audibly speaking it out loud, like, Lord, just let me confidently draw near to you. Help me to confidently draw near to you through this. Like, and just the peace that I had through that at bat um, was incredible. And then I ended up um, getting the job done and hitting a ground rule double to tie the game. And so it was one of the most special, just incredible moments of my career. I mean, I'll never, ever forget that at bat. And, but more importantly, like the peace that I felt, I mean, cause there's, I've been in situations like that before in terms of like games on the line, I'm up to bat and I have not felt peace. Hmm. So to have that in that moment and just to, to be able to call on scripture, I think was really cool. I've been really working the last like two years, really trying to dive into the Bible. Um, so to be able to speak scripture over at my bat is a testimony to, you know, how I've been trying to learn more about God and his word and everything. So, so many things, just so many different aspects of that moment that were so cool to me and my faith and obviously for my team, but um, that whole game, we had been praying for each other. I mean, we would be, and the coolest part about it is that it's not like, oh, one of us is in the corner with my head bowed, like, right. leave me alone. I'm praying. I mean, we're locked in, in the front of the dugout. Like I'm holding Haley McClinney's hand and we're praying for our teammate, Michelle. And, but like in between pitches, we're screaming like, you got this. And then it's like, we're praying and then you got this. And then we're praying. And so just really cool moments like that throughout that game. Um, and then obviously me and my at bat, just speaking that scripture over myself and my at bat was one of 
just an incredible moment of my testimony and my faith um, and just my story, I think. I think it's a great story. What I, even more is the impact, I think, in the future that that can have. So tell me about that because there is a lot of young females, young ladies, people like my daughter, 15, watching mm. you guys and influence. Now, my daughter grew up in the church and knows knows the Lord, but there's a lot of kids that don't. And that's a struggle for her to be able mm. to be open about her faith, to be a witness for Christ and not conform to the patterns of this world, as the Bible says. And mm -hmm. so for you, that opportunity to come through in the, in the, I don't know, the platform that God made, I guess, for you in that moment, did that present opportunities for you to kind of talk about your faith? Obviously, I'm, I'm thinking this, I, mean, I could be wrong, but not everybody on your team is even a believer. So you have to be able to be a great teammate and not alienate your teammates, but not be ashamed about your faith, but also then be able to share your testimony. What took place after that, that has allowed you, or, or did you see opportunities to be able to share your faith with others because of moments like you just described? Yeah, for sure. And I totally relate, um, actually to your daughter in a lot of ways. Um, in the few years from, from my freshman year of college to now, I mean, being like, okay, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be the weird Jesus girl. <laughs> right. You're right. Exactly. In a lot of ways. But at the same time, I want to, I want to honor God and I want to, I don't want to abandon my witness and things like that. So it is definitely a struggle. Um, but when you find, as I found through these last few years, when my confidence grows in the Lord, when I find myself in him, um, it gets easier because I feel like my heart has grown in a lot of ways to just be like, they're, they're at a different place. Like I can share and whether they receive it or not, um, that's not on me. I'm going to, I'm going to just take these opportunities that God lays before me and be honest. I think a lot of, a lot of us get worried that, um, we're going to offend people and that's, I mean, that's something to be aware of, I think. But if I'm just being honest about my life and how God has worked in my life, if someone doesn't, if like someone can't tell me you're lying, you know, someone can't tell me, um, no, that didn't happen because it's my, it's my life. Like it, it's what happened to me. It's, it's, um, it's how I experienced this moment and no one can really counter that. Um, so I think a lot of times just being honest. So there were times when people were like, oh, well, I had a lot of people, oh my gosh, what are you thinking in that moment? How do you, how do you get the job done with all that pressure? And it's, I prayed, Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, so it's a very, it becomes very simple when you're just being honest. And so, <clears throat> and I, you know, I, I mentioned that I prayed to give God the glory that like, if I got it done, that it wouldn't, that I wouldn't allow that to just be me. And so I was on second base. Um, and I just was like, I pointed to the sky and I'm like, Oh my gosh, thank you, God. <laughs> That's yeah. unreal. That's crazy. Um, and I had a teammate come up to me afterwards who, um, like you said, not all of our teammates are believers. I think there's some people who, um, who know of the Lord, um, but maybe, uh, haven't given their life to him or there's, there's all sorts of people on the spectrum sure. on our team. And I had one girl come up to me and she was like, Oh my gosh, when, when you pointed up, I just started crying. And I was mm. like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, I mean, I was praying my entire bat. And so it's given me an opportunity to just be honest with a lot of people. I mean, my teammates, coaches, fans, and then um, social media as well. I mean, social media gets a bad rap sometimes. But um, the reality is it's a great opportunity to just, again, be honest and to share moments like that. I think people are are looking for real. And I think they're, especially in the Christian community, I think they're looking for people who will be honest and open about their faith because it's hard. And if they can see that someone else does it, it gives them the courage to maybe be a little more open in their sphere of influence. So, um, I mean, I take my social media platform pretty seriously in terms of, I want to be real, um, but I also want to, want to use it for, for a purpose. It's not just for my own vanity, I guess. And so sure. it's been an opportunity to share in a lot of ways, just, how good God is. So I got to share, like you said, you saw it on um, Twitter and it was like, I got a chance to just share and be honest, like this verse right here. So I get to put, I get to put the word out in front of people and be like, I spoke this yeah. over my life and my bat in that moment. And it's not about the hate, but the peace that I felt, you know, so that's what 
I think it's cool. And we, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as believers sometimes to, to say the right thing and to, to be the perfect witness and this and that. But I just think being honest and listening to the opportunities that God provides and he, he uses it all, you know, and that's what I've learned the most over these past few years, being in ministry with church on the dirt with some of my teammates, um, is that whether we think we did a good job, like God, God uses it. He finds a way to, to put it to a purpose as long as we're trying to, to serve him. Love that. Aubrey, this has been great. Thanks so much for being here on the show. Last question I have for you. Uh, we asked this to all of our guests. If you heard our interview with Janie, you know this question's coming. What is the Lord teaching you today? Now, you're getting ready to go to Japan and getting ready to compete and and um, be back with your team, with Team USA, and, and, and play some games and work out and Lots of good things are happening for you, but what are you, you just got married. We didn't even really mention that. You mentioned the word <laughs> husband earlier, but we'll talk about that next time maybe, but what is the Lord teaching you right now in this season of life that he has you in? Um, and I, a little bit has to do with being married actually. Okay. Um, I think he's still teaching me to, to really be content in him. Um, I know being the season before I was engaged, I was the girl. I was like, I, what are we doing? We dated for like five years. So I was like, what are we doing? And so then <clears throat> when we finally got engaged, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when we got engaged, I was, you know, I was, I was over the moon. I was so excited. Um, but I had really had to just rest in the Lord before that. Cause I was going stir crazy. It was ridiculous. But, yeah, um, yeah. and then we recently got married and it's, I've just had to kind of, I've been feeling this nudge, like, like just because you're married doesn't mean like, that's not what gives you value. I've been feeling that whisper a little bit, like your husband doesn't give you value um, um, or put value on you. Sorry, that's a better way to put it. Like, yeah. um, and my husband's an incredible man. I mean, believer, he's honestly helped me, held me accountable and also pushed me in my faith in so many ways since we started dating. Um, but just, I catch myself sometimes where it's like, okay, no, your, your worth is not found in your marriage or being an athlete or anything. Like your worth is found in me. Um, and so I think that's kind of what he's teaching me in this season um, as a newlywed and just that it's so easy to just get caught up in like seasons of happiness as opposed to finding my joy consistently in the Lord. Mm. She is Aubrey Monroe, Team USA, Olympic softball catcher, lots of great things happening in Aubrey's life. Listen, this has been great. Uh, we could do another hour, honestly. There's so much to talk about, I think, in in terms of your faith and all that's happening with church in the dirt and just lots of good stuff there, but uh, we'll do it again. And I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thanks so much for sharing your testimony. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. Great stuff there from Aubrey Monroe, Team USA softball catcher for joining us here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. She's got a lot going for her right now and just lots of cool things happening and excited for the journey that God is taking her on both as a newlywed as a wife, but certainly as a softball catcher as well, and getting ready to compete and hopefully be a part of Team USA's run and return to the Olympics in 2020 in Japan. So we wish Aubrey nothing but the best. Give her a follow over on Twitter at Aubrey underscore Monroe one. Certainly the number one is what she wore with Florida. That's her number. So give her a follow on Twitter. Let her know that you heard her story, her journey here on Sports Spectrum's podcast and, and tag her and tag us and we'll retweet it and share it and like it and all that good stuff. And many thanks to Aubrey for being here on Sports Spectrum. Also, thank you for listening. If this is the first time listening to the Sports Spectrum podcast, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you checked out our show. Do us a favor. If you like what you heard on whatever app you're listening to, click that subscribe button so you never miss an episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. And then leave a review, whether it's on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify. Leave us a review. Let us know what you heard, and it just helps get the word out. Uh, these stories are, are so good, and we believe in them, and we want as many people to hear what Jesus is doing in the lives of people in the sports world. So click that subscribe button and never miss an episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast. Thanks for listening. We love you guys. We'll see you next time with a brand new episode of Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day.